In this video, we're going to talk about finding the domain of a composed function. So let's start out on number one by looking at f of g of x. To start these problems, you first figure out the domain of the initial function that you're using, which in this case is g of x. Because g of x is a linear function, it's a polynomial function, we know that there are no restrictions on the domain. But if there were, we would have to respect that and the domain of the composed function could be no bigger than the domain of the original function. So now let's actually find the composition. Let's find f of g of x. So we're going to plug 2x plus 7 in for x and the other function. So we'll get 2x plus 7 plus 5. And just clean that up a little bit. We get the square root of 2x plus 12. Now, because this is a square root function, we know that the inside has to be set greater than or equal to 0 and solve to figure out its domain. If we do that, subtract 12, divide by 2, we get x is greater than or equal to negative 6. And since the original g of x didn't have any restriction, this is the only restriction on the composition. x has to be greater than or equal to negative 6. Now, over here, we're going to find the reverse composition, g of f of x. So let's start with the domain of f of x. We see it's a square root function, so we know that the inside has to be greater than or equal to 0. And we're going to solve that. We get x is greater than or equal to negative 5. So the domain of the composition can be no bigger than this domain. So if, when we do the composition, if we find an x value, say, that would work in the composition but wouldn't fit into this domain, we have to respect this initial domain when we do this. So when we do the composition here, we're going to plug the 2x plus square root of x plus 5 into 2x plus 7. And if you do that, you'll get 2 times the square root of x plus 5 plus 7. Now, the only restriction on this, again, would be the same as the original function, and that x plus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So there's no additional restriction here. So the original restriction on the domain is going to be the same restriction that we get when we do the composition. Let's try another one. Let's scroll down and try number two. So again, we'll start with what's f of g of x. So start out, what is the domain of g of x? We can see g of x is a rational function because it's got a variable in the denominator. And we know the denominator can't equal zero. So set the denominator equal to zero and solve. So we know that x can't equal eight in this case. So now we're going to actually compose the two functions and put them together. So we're going to plug g of x into uh, f of x. And when we do that here, we're going to get 1 over x minus 8 squared minus 1. Now I could square this out, but let's think about what other restriction would there be? Would there be any new restrictions on this one? Well, as you can see here, we're still going to get that original restriction in the denominator. The denominator can equal 0, and what number would make it equal 0? Again, would still be 8. So our domain here is that x can't equal 8 still. And we could put that in interval notation. Now let's try the reverse. Let's find g of f of x. So again, start with the domain of the first function, f of x. We can see that it's a quadratic function here because the x squared is the, and 2 is the highest degree. So there's no domain restriction. So we don't have to worry about that on this problem. So let's compose the two functions. Let's plug f of x into g of x. And I'll get 1 over x squared minus 1 minus 8. And let's clean that up. And you get 1 over x squared minus 9. So now we got to think, well, what domain restriction would happen here? Well, we can't let the denominator equal 0. So let's set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. And I'll add 9, take the square root. Don't forget when you take the square root, you got to put a plus or minus sign. So this is my domain restriction. I can't let x equal positive 3. I can't let x equal negative 3. And then if you want to, you could put that into interval notation. Because there's no original restriction on f of x, this is the only restriction we have to worry about. Let's try number 3 here. Let's start with f of g of x again. Again, what's the domain of g of x? Well, because it's a rational function, we know the denominator can't equal 0, so we set that equal to 0 and solve. Take the square root of both sides, so x can equal 0. So 0 is definitely excluded from the domain. So now let's come up with the composition. So I'm going to plug g of x into f of x, and I'll get the square root of 1 over x squared. And if I take the square root of the numerator, square root of the denominator, I'm going to get 1 over x. 
So here we have a rational function, the denominator can equal zero. So if the denominator can equal zero, we get x can equal zero. And that's the same as the initial restriction, so that's just the only restriction on our domain here. Now let's try the reverse, g of f of x. So start with f of x. f of x is a rational function. So we know that the inside can't equal a negative number. So we set the inside greater than or equal to zero. It kind of solves itself. So we know that the domain can be no bigger than this. So let's compose the two functions now. This time I'm going to get 1 over the square root of x squared. And you get 1 over x. So because we have x in the denominator, we know that x can't equal 0. So this is the first time where we have an initial domain restriction and a new domain restriction. So we got to figure out, what's how do we combine these? Well, the initial one says that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. But the second domain restriction we get when we compose is that x also can't equal 0. So putting these two cases together, together, x is greater than or equal to 0, and in addition, x can equal 0, well, then our domain is just simply going to be that x has to be strictly greater than 0. The first domain says it has to be greater than or equal to 0, but the second, when we do the composition, says it also can't equal 0, so we take that out of the domain, and that's going to be our final domain for the composition right here. Let's try a few more. So on number 4, we're trying to find the domain of f of g of x. So again, start out with what's the domain of g of x. So because it's a rational function, we can't let the denominator equal to 0. Set it equal to 0 and solve. Subtract 18, divide by 2. x can't equal negative 9. So that's definitely restricted from our domain. Now let's make the composition. Plug g of x into f of x. And if I do that, I'll get 3 times 1 over 2x plus 18 plus 4. So if I just multiply that, I'll get 3 over 2x plus 18 plus 4. Now because this is still a rational function, we can't let the denominator equal to 0. And we see we're going to get the same restriction that we got when we found the domain of g of x. So the only domain restriction here is, again, going to be that x can't equal negative 9. And that's the only restriction when we do this. So that's the domain of the composition. On the next one, we're going to do g of f of x. So start out with the domain of f of x. Well, f of x is a linear function. It has no domain restrictions. So don't have to worry about any initial restrictions. So now let's compose the function. Plug f of x into g of x, and you get 1 over 2 times 3x plus 4 plus 18. Now let's clean that up a little bit, make this a little bit longer. Distribute and you'll get 6x plus 8 plus 18. And if I put that all together, you'll get 6x plus 26. So now that we know that we have a rational function here, the denominator cannot equal 0, so we'll set it equal to 0 and solve. So it can't equal 0, so we're going to subtract 26 and then divide by 6. And you're going to get x equals negative 20, well, can equal negative 26 over 6, which reduces to negative 13 over 3. So that's the only domain restriction on this because the original function had no domain restriction. On number 5, let's start out with f of g of x. So start with g of x. What's the domain of g of x? We can see it's a square root function, so the inside has to be greater than or equal to 0. So subtract 3, and that's the initial domain restriction. So this has to be a restriction on our domain. So now we're going to try to compose these two functions. I'm going to plug g of x into f of x. And I end up that the square root of the square root of x plus 3 minus 4 is the composition. Now, we know that the inside of this has to be greater than or equal to 0. So set the inside greater than or equal to 0. So the square root of x plus 3 minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So if we solve that, we're going to add 4. I'm going to get a room here. You're going to get the square root of x plus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 4. Now, is that possible? Yeah, it is possible. It is possible for a square root to come out bigger than or equal to 4. So square both sides. And I'm going to come over here. You get x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 16 and subtract 3. 
You get x is greater than or equal to 13. So now we have to compare this to the original domain of g of x. And really got to say, where are the intersection of this? x is greater than or equal to negative 3. x is greater than or equal to 13. Another way to ask that question is saying, since they face the same direction, which one of these would be more restrictive? Which one of these requires less x values that you could use? Well, in here I can include numbers like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But in here I can't use those numbers. So this is definitely the more restrictive domain. And since I have to take the intersection of these two, I have to go with the more restrictive. So this is going to be my domain for the composition. Now let's do the reverse. Again, start out with the domain of the original function. This time it's f of x. So f of x is a square root function. Set it equal to 0. Set the inside greater than or equal to 0 and solve. You get x is greater than or equal to 4. Now I actually put the composition together, and I'll get the square root of the square root of x minus 4 plus 3. So now we know that the inside of this has to be greater than or equal to 0. So we got to look for any more domain restrictions on this. So x minus 4 plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. And we go to solve that. And at this point, it's important you notice that the square root is always going to be greater than or equal to negative 3 so long as we meet the initial domain restriction. So this actually isn't going to add any more restrictions to us because as long as we meet the initial restriction, which will keep the inside uh, zero or positive, it's impossible for this to come out not bigger than or equal to negative three. So in this case, the only restriction is the initial one that we had to start with and the domain of the composition is x is greater than or equal to four because this doesn't give us any additional restrictions because this will always happen so long as the initial restriction uh, is followed. On number six, let's start out with f of g of x. What's the domain of g of x? Well, g of x is a quadratic function, so its domain is all real numbers. x is a real number, so we don't have to worry about any restriction there. Now let's put the composition together. So plug x squared into f, and if you do that, you'll get 3 over x squared plus 1. So because now it's a rational function, we know the denominator can't equal 0, so we try to find a restriction there. But when you get here, you know that when you square a number, it can't come out to be negative. So there's no restriction here. Since x squared can't come out to be negative, and it would need to be negative 1 for the denominator to equal 0, there's no restriction, new restriction here. And since the original domain also had no restriction, there's absolutely no restriction uh, to the composition. So x is in the real numbers, or in interval notation, I could say it's from negative infinity to infinity. So let's try the reverse, f of g of f of x. So the domain of f of x, well, it's a rational function. So the denominator can't equal 0. Set that equal, not equal to 0 and solve. You get x can equal negative 1. Now let's put the composition together. So I'm plugging this time uh, f of x into g of x, and I'll get 3 over x plus 1 squared. Well, you can see that it's still a rational function. Even though I'm squaring it, it doesn't really change anything. I can't let the denominator equal to 0. So obviously, you're going to get that x can't equal negative 1 again. So the original restriction on this one is the only restriction you're going to get. Last one here. Start with f of g of x. So start with the domain of g of x. Well, since it's a rational function, I cannot allow the denominator to equal 0. So set it not equal to 0 and solve, subtract 15, divide by 5, you get x can't equal negative 3. So we know negative 3 is definitely excluded. Now put the two functions together. If I do that, so this time I'm plugging g of x into f of x, so I get 2 times 1 over 5x plus 15 plus 1. Well, if I just multiply that 2, I get this. And the only restriction I have to worry about is I can't let the denominator equal 0 again because I have this rational expression. But you can see it's the same denominator as the original, so I'm going to get the same restriction. So the only restriction on this one is the same as the restriction on the original domain in that x cannot equal negative 3. Now let's do the reverse uh, composition, g of f of x. So if we look at f of x, it's a linear function, so its domain is automatically all real numbers, x is in the reals, or negative infinity to infinity. So let's do the composition. I'm going to plug f of x into g of x, so I'm going to get oops, 1 over 
5 times 2x plus 1 plus 15. Oops, extend that. And distribute and combine like terms, and I'll get 1 over 10x plus 20. So now I know I can't let the denominator equal to 0, so I'll set it equal to 0 and solve. Subtract 20, divide by 10, and you get x cannot equal negative 2. And since the original function f of x had no restrictions, this is going to be the only restriction on the composition. So that's a look at finding the domain of composition of functions.